Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. In this video, we're going to start the process of tackling the issue of spam by installing on our email server something called Spam Assassin. So those who have been following this video series will be very glad to see we're finally starting to tackle these two points which have been sitting here taunting us for the last few videos. Now there are two forms of spam that we have to worry about as architects of our own email server. There's the spam coming into our email server, so that's people sending us emails, and then there's the emails we send ending up in other people's spam boxes. I'm representing this kind of picture here. On the left hand side I've got our Raspberry Pi, and on the right hand side we've got the internet, which represents all of the recipients we're going to send emails to. So there are three conditions to consider here. One is the emails going out, and I've coloured it red because we know our emails are being considered spam by all other email providers. And then we've got two coming back in, and these represent the emails that are being sent from somebody else to our email address. Now, the reason why one of these two arrows is green is because we've made some changes already to our default email server configuration to block emails coming in which don't have a valid domain and don't have certain DNS settings configured. And this is because, as you've seen when I demonstrated using the Telnet tool, you can send an email anywhere if you've got an email server on your computer and you can pretend to be somebody else. So one of the checks that's made, uh, which isn't set up by default on Postfix, but we have configured to be so, is to make sure that the email is coming from a domain because that means the person who's sending the email, their personal details or somebody's personal details are associated with the domain from which the email has come. So in theory, there's a traceability. So by doing those configuration changes, we've at least made this part green and have prevented some obvious ingress points for spam into our server. The problem we've got now is that if a uh, advertisement campaign is going on from a valid domain, um, which nine times out of 10 would be considered spam, our system at the moment has no mechanism to check and detect that. So we're still open to the standard kinds of spam, the normal advertisements that you don't want going into your inbox. So we need some form of active spam detection on our server. Now, interestingly, one of the main solutions we will apply to the problem of receiving spam, which is what we're going to look at in this video, is also a required step to legitimize our server as a trusted email source. So by attempting to solve the issue of receiving spam, this arrow here, we're actually also going to tick a box towards allowing our emails, which we send, to be considered legitimate as well. Okay, so before we head over to the desktop and get going, I just want to mention what Spam Assassin actually is, what it does for us and what it doesn't. So Spam Assassin is an open source Apache project and it's very commonly used. And out of the box, it will function as a spam filter. But it's worth noting that it's even better at this job if you train it on your own mailbox where you've marked your mail as spam historically. If you already had a mailbox that was well established with lots of spam marked, this is very much worth doing. And it's something you should come back to after you've been running your mailbox for a while. But we shan't, shan't be covering that here, <laughs> excuse me, uh, because you do need an established mailbox to make sense of doing it. Uh, but as I've mentioned, installing Spam Assassin alone is a great first level spam preventation technique. And it's a step towards validating our outgoing emails as well. The last thing I'll say is that Spam Assassin only marks emails as spam. It doesn't sort them into folders. It doesn't manipulate the file system at all. So the behavior you might expect in a client uh, for example, a email is discovered to be spam and is automatically moved to the jump box, won't happen. What will just happen is the mail will be marked as spam. And you can decide how Spam Assassin marks it as spam, actually, and that's a setting we're going to do. But in order to get the behavior such that the email not only is marked as spam, but is also sent to the junk box, which is what we want, we don't want it in our inbox, um, we'll do the sorting using Duffcott's local mail transfer protocol. So don't worry, by the end of this, we will have a way of getting spam caught and moving it into the junk box. Okay, let's get over then to the desktop and let's make this happen.
Okay, here we are on my desktop. I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi as the first stage using my alias Pi setup uh, right back in the WordPress video series. I'm going to clear my screen. Okay, so something we've not done in a while is run an update command. So the first thing I'm going to do is type in sudo apt get update and press enter. Now, for those who aren't particularly knowledgeable about Linux, what sudo apt-get update is doing is it's simply refreshing the list of available software uh, which we can get from our distribution vendor. We're not actually installing any software. And we're doing that because every time we then run sudo apt-get install, we'll be pulling the latest version of that software, whatever we're installing. Now, in this case, we're installing Spam Assassin. So by running sudo apt-get update, we're making sure that we're going to get the latest version of Spam Assassin available to us via our distribution provider. So I'm now going to type in sudo apt-get install Spam Assassin. Remember, there are four S's in Assassin. Okay, so sudo apt-get install Spam Assassin, all one word. Press enter. Right, for me that actually took quite a few minutes, so I went away and came back. Um, I've cleared my screen, which is why it's all disappeared, but I have now got Spam Assassin installed. So you now hopefully will also have Spam Assassin installed. And what we need to do now is make some changes to the configuration file, followed by running the Spam Assassin software as a service on our Raspberry Pi. So let's start with making some changes to the configuration file. I'm going to use nano as my text editor here. So I'm going to type in sudo in case we require elevated permissions to change the file. Nano for the text editor and then slash etc slash spam assassin. I'm going to use tab to speed this up. Followed by local.cf. So that's sudo nano etc spam assassin local.cf. Press enter. Okay, so this is the spam assassin main configuration file, and we're going to change four lines. The first thing we're going to do is cursor down to this line here where it says rewrite header subject spam, and we're going to uncomment it by deleting the hash. What this is saying is when spam assassin detects an email as spam, mark the subject line with the word spam. So it's going to include all of this in the email subject line so that it's quite clear the email is spam. And we're actually later on going to pick up on that as a trigger for whether or not to move the email to the junk box. So that's uncommented. We're going to go down a little bit further to here where it says report safe one. I'm going to delete the comment to bring it in and I'm going to change one to zero. And what we're doing here is we're telling Spam Assassin not to make any changes to the body of the email. Okay. And now we're going to go down quite a bit further, right towards the bottom, and we've got two lines here we want to change. Well, actually, we don't want to change them. I'm going to uncomment them, so it's not quite true. What I'm going to do is uncomment them. So use Bayes, I'm going to uncomment, and then the one beneath it, which says Bayes Auto Learn 1. Now you'll notice that both of these lines are defaulted to default 1, so you don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to make it quite clear what settings I've got enabled, so I've uncommented them to make them active. Use Bayes is basically telling Spam Assassin to use Bayesian uh, model for its um, detection of spam, and Bayes Auto Learn is saying to use automatically our um, history to detect spam moving forward. So we want that to be set as one, although it is already set as one by default. Okay, so we've got our configuration file now set up how we want it. So I'm going to save that file. I'm going to exit from it. Um, and I'm going to clear my screen just to stay organized as I normally do. So the next thing to do now that we've configured Spam Assassin appropriately is to enable it and then start it as a service. So if you follow along with what I type, 
I'm going to type in sudo update hyphen rc dot d. So that's sudo update hyphen rc dot d space spam assassin space enable. Press enter. OK, so that's now enabled it. What we now need to do is start it running as a service. So type in sudo service spam assassin start. OK, great. We're getting somewhere now. The last thing we need to do is we need to tell Postfix to use spam assassin. So we're going to edit a very familiar file. We're going to head into the postfix master configuration file. So I'm going to type in as follows, sudo nano slash etc slash postfix slash master dot cf. And this should be very familiar to you. Here we are. So we're going to make some boilerplate changes to this configuration file. For the sake of saving some typing, I'm going to press enter where my cursor is here to create a space. And then I'm going to copy the line above it and paste it in. So I'm going to highlight it with the mouse. I'm going to press control C and then I'm going to right click where my cursor is to paste it in again. OK, so I've duplicated that line. I'm now going to change the Y to a dash. I don't know if that's needed. I just know that it works <laughs> this way, so I don't wish to tempt fate. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to add an option flag. So it's very important to press space just four times here. So one, two, three, four, and then minus O space content underscore filter equals spam assassin. Okay, so just to be clear, on this option line, which uses the flag minus O, make sure there are four spaces, one, two, three, four, followed by the minus O flag, followed by content underscore filter equals spam assassin. Okay, so that's the first thing to do. And now I'm going to scroll down right to the bottom of this configuration file, and I'm going to paste something in. Now to save on the typing, I'm not going to type it out and expect you to do the same. I'm going to include this in the description. That's the first time in this video series I've done it, but that's because I consider this setup to be a little bit uh, boilerplate-y. Um, this isn't something that I care enough about to, to go through and explain. So if you look in the description of this video, you'll find that line. If you copy it and paste it into your text editor, then you know that you're good to go. OK, so I'm going to save this file now because we've finished with it with these two changes. I'm going to exit out of it. And we're now just going to restart Postfix. As always, if ever you make any changes to Postfix or Dovecot, you have to restart the services. So I'm going to type in sudo service Postfix restart. And as always, it's always a good idea to check the status of the service after you've made a change to the configuration file. So I'm going to delete restart and I'm going to replace it with status. And there we go. We can see that our changes have been accepted. So I'm going to clear my screen to be organized. And that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to be sending an email with a certain message in the body, which will be picked up as spam by spam assassin as an acid test that this setup is working as it should. And then we're going to set up Dovecot's local mail transfer protocol so that these messages that are marked as spam are picked up and moved into the junk box. Uh, if you found this video useful, please do like it and please do subscribe to my video series. If you'd like to support my work or if you'd like access to videos before they're released and there are quite a few that are being produced which aren't on YouTube, please do uh, head over to my Patreon account and become a patron. I'd very much appreciate any support you can offer. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.